Welcome to the channel. The wolf time is almost upon us. Welcome to my overview slash review of the Space Wolves Codex. Um, this is available for pre-order on Saturday the 18th of August and you can buy it from Games Workshop on Saturday the 25th of August and it's an army book for games of 8th edition Warhammer 40k. So I'm going to do an overview of the special rules, stratagems, warlord traits, psychic powers, relics, things like that. An overview, so what you can expect when you pick up this codex. I'm not going to dive into all the unit entries because I don't play Space Wolves, I don't know them very well, and uh, I won't do it to justice. There'll be other uh, videos out there on the internet that you can see to have a look at all the particular unit traits and unit stuff that Space Wolves do. Uh, the one thing I will mention though is all the new Primaris stuff is here, the Repulsive Tank, the Redemptor Dreadnought, Reavers, Aggressors, all the Primaris goodness has been added to the Space Wolves force. There is no Layman Russ yet. The wolf time is almost upon us. I'm sure he will return at some point. Now the first thing that the Space Wolves can do, as as, as well they, they have and Nation No No Fear as we all know, but um, they get something called Hunters Unleashed. And if your army is battle forged, troops units in Space Wolves Detachment gain the Defenders of Humanity ability. Um, which is, uh, you can control objective markers with troops. Um, regardless of whether or not you outnumber people on those objective markers. So that's the troops getting objective secured. In addition, infantry, biker, cavalry, dreadnoughts, um, other than servitor units in Space Wolves detachments gain the Hunter's Unleashed ability. And Hunter's Unleashed is whenever the Space Wolves charge or are charged or make a heroic intervention, they add one to hit rolls in the fight phase. Basically, the Space Wolves going forward are going to be hitting on twos when they charge or when they're charged. And characters can heroically intervene uh, to enemy units within six inches of them instead of the normal three inches of them, which I really, really like. The idea that characters can always get into a fight and when they heroically intervene, they'll add one to their hit rolls, so they'll be hitting on twos. So if the entire Space Wolves army hits on twos when it charges, having a captain nearby, or battle leader as they're called for Space Wolves, hitting on twos, re-rolling ones, and for dreadnoughts as well, it's going to be nasty. One of the Warlord traits, Saga of the Wolfkin, which Canis Wolfborn has, Herald Death Wolf has, or it's a six on the Warlord traits table, is your Warlord and models in any friendly units of wolf and space wolf beasts and space wolf cavalry units within six inches of him when they're chosen to fight in the fight phase can make one additional attack in the turn they made a successful charge and uh, in addition they don't need to take morale tests when they're within six inches of your warlord so um yeah wolf lords on thunder cavalry charging in everyone's hitting on twos everyone's re-rolling ones everyone's getting plus one attack when they go charging in there as well that's nasty. You've also got the Wolfenstone, which is one of the relics, and you can make one additional attack for models in friendly Space Wolves infantry, biker, and cavalry units that are within three inches of the bearer when they make their attacks in the fight phase. Units of Wolfen are not affected. So if you've got Saga of the Wolfkin and the Wolfenstone, then you've got two extra attacks, one within six inches, one within three inches. Again, I'm thinking of Thunder Cavalry here or terminators perhaps or and you're hitting on twos and you're re-rolling ones that's a boatload of attacks right let's have a look through some of the stratagems so some of the generic space marine stratagems are here such as orbital bombardment wisdom of the ancients kill shot flak missiles things like that but they've also got a lot of unique special stratagems just for space wolves um, there's three pages of stratagems in this book as well so you've got plenty to pick from. The three point stratagems, cloaked by the storm. Use this stratagem in your psychic phase. Choose a rune priest from your army that successfully manifested a psychic power in this phase. And your opponent must subtract one from all hit rolls for range attacks that target friendly space wolves units within six inches of this model until the beginning of your next psychic phase. So minus one to hit six inch bubble or 12 inch bubble six inches from the model for three command points the other three point command point stratagems are orbital bombardment and honor the chapter which allows you to fight again we see those in the other space marine codexes 
that's it for three point command points. Most of them are one points, and there's a couple of two point ones, but only a couple. Uh, so for two command points, only in death does duty end. We know that one. Uh, two command points, howl of the great pack. Use this stratagem at the beginning of the morale phase. Choose a wolf lord from your army, and friendly space wolf units within 12 inches of that model automatically pass, pass morale tests that phase and your opponent must add one to morale test taken by enemy units within 12 inches of that model this phase we've got two command points chooser of the slain use this stratagem immediately after your opponent sets up a unit that's arriving on the battlefield as reinforcements and is visible to a room priest from your army a single friendly unit within six inches of that room priest can immediately shoot at that enemy as if it were the shooting phase but you must sub subtract one from any hit rolls when it does so. So that one's a bit like or spec scan. And those are the two command points one. Then everything else is one command point. Everything else is nice and cheap. And there's some really good ones. In here is the best stratagem I've ever read because it's narrative, not because it's brilliant, but because it's narrative. And it's called Lone Wolf. And it's one command point, a space marine whose pack mates have all been slain fights with even greater tenacity to avenge his fallen battle brothers. So use this stratagem at the end of any phase. If there is a Space Wolves infantry unit from your army, other than character servitor or wolfen, and this infantry unit has been reduced to a single model. That single model's wounds characteristics is increased by two and gains two wounds. And it gains the character keyword, and you can reroll failed hit and wound rolls for the remainder of you get the game. So not necessarily game changing if you've got one tactical marine left in a squad, or they're not called tactical marines in Space Wolves, but uh, one pack brother left in a squad, suddenly he can get two wounds and reroll a hit and reroll a wound for one command point. Lone Wolf fights with more ferocity. Brilliant, brilliant stratagem. I like it. Perfectly encapsulates what Space Wolves are. And it doesn't sound that beef, but it's any Space Wolves inventory. So say it's a Terminator who's re-rolling the hit and re-rolling the wound. Say it's a Devastator, or not a Devastator, a Long Fang, as they are in Space Wolves, re-rolling the hit and re-rolling the wound with a Laz Cannon. Um, you could make that, that Lone Wolf one-point uh, stratagem could be, could be very, very good put on one of those particular models. Um, you can outflank, or sorry, you can set up stuff in the webway. You can set up stuff in reserve for one point. It's called the Cunning of the Wolf. Use this stratagem during deployment. When setting up a Space Wolves infantry unit, you can set up this unit on the hunt instead of placing it on the battlefield. And at the end of any of your movement phases, the unit can join the battle. And it is set up wholly within six inches of a battlefield edge of your choice and more, more than nine inches away from enemy models. Cunning of the Wolf outflank with any infantry unit. Overwhelming impetuosity for Blood Call Laws units that successfully charged and are within one inches of a enemy unit with a higher power rating. So your Blood Calls go charging in. The unit they're fighting against is a higher power rating. You're hitting on twos, remember, because you're charging in. And you can re-roll all failed hit rolls for the Blood Claws unit's attacks that target that enemy unit that turn. One command point, Mentor's Guidance. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase or in the fight phase. Choose a Space Wolf's character other than a Wolf Priest that is within six inches of a Wolf Priest from your army. And you can reroll all failed wound rolls for that character this phase. So again, think about hitting on twos um, with some of your characters, rerolling ones with some of your characters. If there's a Wolf Priest nearby, not only are they going to be hitting on twos, re-rolling ones, but they're going to be re-rolling all failed wounds as well for one command point. Nice. Laugh in the face of death. One command point. Use a strategy in the fight phase. Choose a Space Wolves infantry, biker or cavalry unit from your army that's affected by an enemy's unit's ability that modifies their leadership. And you can re-roll all failed hit rolls for that Space Wolves unit this phase. Overwhelming Savagery. Use this stratagem in the fight phase. Choose a unit of Thunder Wolf Cavalry from your army. You can re-roll wound rolls of one for that unit this phase. That one's nice. Thunder Cav are going to be hitting on twos now unless they have hammers and fists, which some of them do have. 
But uh, re-rolling wound rolls. Nice. Re-rolling wound rolls of one. Seeking a saga is you pick a character from your army that's fighting something with a higher power rating than it. And that character can re-roll all failed wound rolls for attacks against that enemy unit. The Wolf's Eye is a particularly good one. For one command point, use this strategy in your shooting phase when a unit of long fangs from your army is chosen to make its attacks. So this is in the shooting phase. You're shooting away and you can re-roll either failed hit rolls or failed wound rolls for that unit this phase. And for one command point, that's pretty beef. One command point, keen senses. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase. Choose a Space Wolves unit from your army, any Space Wolves unit from your army, and that unit doesn't suffer any penalties to its hit rolls this phase. So those Eldar armies getting you down with their minus one or minus two to hit, for one command point, you've got keen senses and you've got no negatives for you when you're shooting. You could of course combine that keen senses for one command point with the wolf sigh for one command point and not only not have a negative to hit, but re-roll your hits or re-roll your wounds. Uh, one command point, the Emperor's Executioners. Use this stratagem when a Space Wolves unit from your army is chosen to attack in the fight phase and each time you make a hit roll of four up or when you're targeting a Thousand Suns unit, you can e immediately make an extra attack. Uh, against the same unit using the same weapon. So basically, uh, death to the false emperor on a four up when you're fighting um, Thousand Suns, because Space Wolves do not like Thousand Suns. There's a couple of other ones in there which we're probably not going to see, as well as all the other ones that uh, are generic to other Space Marine armies. Now, your Warlord traits. Warlord traits are called Sagas. Of course, they're called Sagas. This is Space Wolves. And uh, I've already told you one of them, which is the additional attack. But here's the other five. Uh, number one is you can always choose your Warlord to fight first. Number two is you add one to wound rolls for your Warlord's attacks that target a monster or vehicle. Saga of the Beast Slayer. Saga of the Hunter. Add two to saving throws made for, for your Warlord when he receives the benefits of cover instead of one. In addition, your Warlord can advance and charge in the same turn. That's pretty beef. Saga of the Hunter. And uh, you've got Saga of the Bear. Increase the wounds characteristic by one of your Warlord. Saga of Majesty. Friendly Space Wolf units within 12 inches of your Warlord do not have to take morale tests. It's a 24 inch bubble there. Relics of the Fang. We have one page of relics. There is six relics. I've already mentioned the Wolf and Stone. And three of them are weapons. One is the Crack and Bone Sword, which is reroll failed wound rolls with this uh, frost sword, basically. There's the Black Death, which is a frost axe. And each time the bearer fights, it makes an additional D3 attacks with this weapon. And as it strength plus two AP minus two, one damage, an extra D3 attacks. Um, that's pretty nice. And a Frost Fury uh, is a Storm Bolter but it's an Assault 4 Storm Bolter that does 2 damage uh, at AP-1 instead of the normal 1 damage. We've also got the Armor of Rus. This model has a 4-up invulnerable save, and in addition at the start of the fight phase, choose an enemy unit within 1 inch of the model, and that unit cannot be chosen to fight in the fight phase until all other units available to fight have done so. So you can shut down an enemy model from fighting. Um, he will fight last. And Helm of Durfast. You can re-roll failed hit rolls for this model's ranged attacks. In addition, enemy units never gain any bonus to their saving throws for being in cover for attacks made by this model. Those are the relics. Those are the warlord traits. No command farming going on there. And most of the relics and warlord traits, as you can see, are to do with attacking, are to do with punching people in the face, which is what space wolves like to do. The Tempestus Discipline, that's their psychic powers. We have Living Lightning, which is a warp charge value of six. If manifested, the closest visible unit within 18 inches of the cipher suffers D3 mortal wounds. If that unit is as destroyed as a result, the closest enemy unit within 18 inches of the last model from the unit to be removed suffers D3 mortal wounds and so on until a unit is not destroyed or is, if there is no enemy units within 18 inches of the last model in the destroyed unit.
So Living Lightning does D3 mortal wounds on a warp charge value of 6 and can chain to other units. Instead of doing D3 mortal wounds a time, you can do D6 mortal wounds a time for spending a one command point stratagem called Living Storm. So if you've got three Space Wolf Psychers within six inches of each other and they cast Living Lightning, instead of doing D3 mortal wounds a time, it'll do D6 mortal wounds a time. It's a one command point stratagem, you've got to pull off Living Lightning, but that's pretty beef, considering that Living Lightning chains. Number two is Tempest Wrath. It's a walk charge value of six. If manifested, select a visible enemy unit within 24 inches of the Psyker. And until the start of your next psychic phase, your opponent must subtract one from any hit rolls that they make from the unit. That's in close combat or shooting. Just minus one to their hit rolls for the Tempest Wrath. Murderous Hurricane. Walk charge value of five. Select a visible enemy unit within 18 inches of the Psyker and roll one dice for every model in that unit. The unit suffers a mortal wound for each roll of a six. Murderous Hurricane. So those Horde armies that have got 30 models in a unit or even 20 models in a unit pass this psychic power on a warp charge value of five. And if there's 20 models in that unit, you're going to roll 20 dice. And every time you roll a six, that unit will receive a mortal wound. Fury of the Wolf Spirits. Warp charge value of seven. If manifested, the Rune Priest gains the following weapon until the start of your next Psychic Phase. So Freki and Geri turn up, and uh, after the Rune Priest makes his close combat attacks, you can attack with Freki and Geri. Um, these are the uh, Spirit Wolves of Layman Rust. They've got six attacks at strength five. Um, AP minus one, one damage each. And they'll use the uh, Wolf Priest's um, weapon skill. Stormcaller, warp charge value of 8, so this is the most expensive one. If manifested until the start of your next psychic phase, the Psyker and all Space Wolf units within 6 inches of him gain the benefit of being in cover. Now you could stack that with the Cloaked by the Storm stratagem, remember that was a 3 point stratagem, which um, means your opponent subtracts 1 from all hit rolls for range attacks that target friendly Space Wolf units within six inches of the Rune Priest. And here, not only are they subtracting one, but all Space Wolf units within six inches of him gain the benefit of being in cover as well. Um, it's a pretty mean combo to pull off and it will cost you three command points, but uh, it's it's gonna be powerful. Jaws of the World Wolf, uh, Wolf charge value of seven. If manifested, select an enemy unit within 18 inches of the Psyker other than a vehicle and roll 2d6. Subtract the target's move characteristic. The target unit suffers a number of mortal wounds equal to the result. So basically the slower the unit, the more that it gets hurt. So those um, all is rust, thousand suns, terminators that only move four inches, you roll 2d6, so you get a 10 or something. They'll subtract four because that's their movement and they'll re receive six mortal wounds. Um, that's just mean. So as we can see, the Tempestus Discipline has plenty of opportunities to do mortal wounds. Living Lightning can chain and even do D6 damage instead of D3 if you've got three Psychers. Murderous Hurricane is particularly set up for murdering Horde units with mortal wounds. Jaws of the World Wolf, particularly set up for murdering slow units. It won't be very effectual against very fast units. But the Tempestus Discipline is, um, is quite brutal, just like Space Wolves in close combat. I want to briefly mention some of the special rules for the special characters in the Space Wolves Codex because this characters, it's all about characters, it's all about heroes, that's what Space Wolves are all about. So Logan Grimnar, the High King of Fenris, we all know about him, basically you can reroll all failed hit rolls within 6 inches of him, you don't have to take any morale tests within 6 inches of him, if you stick him on Storm Rider, you can reroll failed charge rolls for that model. And he's got seven wounds and five attacks and a four up and vulnerable save. And he is mean. And he can swing his axe in one or two profiles. He can swing it over his head at plus two strength or uh, two handed at times two strength. He's pretty mean. Bjorn the fell handed will give you an extra command point because he's an extra tactician. He's a dreadnought, but he's a character with eight wounds. So he can't be targeted, which is brilliant. 
You can re-roll hit rolls of one for Space Wolf units that are within six inches of um, Bjorn the Fell Handed, and he's uh, got legendary tenacity. Every time he loses a wound on a five up, that wound is not lost. And if you want to read about Bjorn the Fell Handed, then uh, I recommend picking up the book uh, Prospero Burns um, by Dan Abner. Is it Prospero Burns or is it the other one? I think it's Prospero Burns from the Horus Heresy. And he's in it when he was alive before he was put in a dreadnought because Bjorn is the oldest living person in the whole of the Imperium, minus Guilliman. And uh, Bjorn is a dude. And the Jarl Stormcaller is still a beef psyker. He adds one to any psychic test he makes. He knows three psychic powers, including Smite. So he knows four in total. He can cast two a turn. And uh, he can attempt to deny two a turn as well. And you can re-roll one fail, deny the witch test for Najal Stormcaller in each of your opponent's psychic phases. And he's got a five up and vulnerable save, which is quite rare for a... Um, uh, it, regardless of whether it is in Terminator armor or not, which is quite rare for a Psyker. Ragnar Blackmane. Ragnar. Reroll fail charge rolls for spe friendly Space Wolf units other than vehicles within six inches of him, just to get your Thundercab up there quicker or something up there quicker. Reroll fail charges and reroll hit rolls of one for Space Wolves within six inches of um, Ragnar. And. Uh, if he performs a heroic intervention, increase his attacks characteristics by D3 until the end of the turn, and he has five attacks already. And remember, Space Wolves can heroically intervene up to six inches away. There's two flavors of HQ on a Thunder Cavalry mount. One is Harold Death Wolf, the other one is Canis Wolfborn. Harold Death Wolf can outflank, and any friendly Thunder Wolf Cavalry units with him. Um, Thunderwolf units and friendly units of Fenrisian wolves and cyber wolves within six inches of him can use his leadership instead of their own, which is good when it comes to wolves because uh, Fenrisian wolves have a really, really low leadership. Uh, where is it? Fenrisian wolves have a leadership of uh, four and a cyber wolf has a leadership of six. So basically, if you're bringing wolves, you want to bring Harold along because they're going to use his leadership nine instead. And of course, Fenrisian wolves, you can include a cyber wolf in them, or you can just take units of cyber wolves, and a cyber wolf unit contains one cyber wolf, or you can add up to four cyber wolves. And uh, cyber wolves are a bit better than Fenrisian wolves. Fenrisian wolves have one wound and a six up save. Cyber wolves have two wounds and a four up save. And with three attacks, um, Hitting on threes at minus one AP, one damage strength four, and moving 10 inches and 15 points a model. Cyber wolves are pretty good. Um, I quite like them. Well, you can bring along Canis Wolfborn, as I said. He's the other guy riding around on a Thunder Cav. And you can reroll failed charges for Canis Wolfborn, and you can reroll wound rolls of one for any Space Wolves in infantry units within six inches of Canis Wolfborn. Also, Fenrisian wolves and cyber wolves that are within six inches of Canis Wolfborn get an extra attack. They can make one additional teeth and claws attack uh, in the fight phase. So if you want to bring lots of puppies along, then those are the two characters that you want to get into battle with. Um, most of the characters there are allowing you to re-roll hit rolls of one. You can bring a wolf guard battle leader along. These are the space wolves equivalent of a lieutenant or lieutenant if you're American. And this allows you to re-roll wound rolls of one for every friendly Space Wolf unit that is within six inches of the model. That's a Wolf Guard Battle Leader. So to really make this codex sing, you probably only want to bring one unit that stays in the backfield, maybe two tops, and that's it. Maybe some long fangs in the backfield, maybe a vehicle in the backfield, but I probably wouldn't bring a vehicle. Probably have a couple of units of long fangs in the backfield and that's it. Keeping them try, trying to keep them as cheap as possible with everything else moving up as quickly and as aggressively as you can. With your wolves, with your cyber wolves, with your thunder wolf cavalry, with your wolfen, with guys coming out of rhinos. Get everything up there really quickly. Hitting on twos when they charge. Rerolling hit rolls of one because you're going to be supported by your characters all the way around you. And then uh, rerolling wound rolls of one with your wolf guard battle leaders around you as well and uh, bring an overwhelming amount of force to bear against your army, against your opponent, sorry, when you go racing in there. 
For example, great company champions are quite interesting because it's a single model with four wounds and it's a character so you can't target it. It's got a bolt pistol, mastercrafted power sword and a five up and vulnerable save and three attacks and it hits on twos. So you've got this single model charging in there, hitting on twos and it can re-roll uh, failed hit rolls in the fight phase when targeting characters with his mastercrafted power sword. Mastercrafted power swords are damage too as well. So a couple of great company champions scattered throughout the um, lines that are charging forward. They're not going to get targeted and when they get in there they're going to start hurting stuff. Frag and crack grenades as well. They're quite interesting. So with the Mastercrafted power sword, the great company champion is 50 points. Wolfguard battle leaders which um, you can re-roll wound rolls of one for all spend friendly space wolves units that are within six inches. They're 60 points. Give him a lightning claw, for example, that's um, 68 points. So these are cheap characters that you can put in your front line. Um, and remember, if anything charges the Space Wolves lines here, they're going to be hitting on twos back again. And these battle leaders or company champions, these cheap characters will be heroically intervening six inches away. Okay, so this is a disclaimer time. This is where I hold my hands up and say, I can't find my index anywhere. I don't know where I put it. She may have cleaned it out. So going through each of the units in this book and talking about, I can't really compare the points cost in this book to the index because I can't find my index. And I can't really run through all the units in this book with any clear certainty and compare it to the index because I don't have my index. And a full disclosure, I haven't fought Space Wolves at all in 8th edition yet. I don't play Space Wolves. So um, I can't dive into this in the sense that I would, in the way that I would normally would. But I'll try and answer some of the questions before I close this out. Some of the most important questions that. Uh, uh, well, some of the questions I think people need uh, answers to. So first up, there are no wolves on Fenris. Second, there's no real news of Russ in here, Layman Russ, where he is and what he's doing. Um, there's lots of hints that the wolf time is coming or that we're in it. Um, but nothing directly about Layman Russ. I mean, in the Dark Angels book, that was that little nugget at the end saying, hey, the lion is around and he's hiding in the rock. Uh, nothing like that in this book. I can't find any information about Sven Bloodhowl from the Fall of Cadia. I think that's how you say his name. And I can't find any specific rules for great companies, which is a big shame. I think GW missed out on something there. So for those of the, you that don't know, the Space Wolves were not split down into chapter-sized uh, armies after the Horus Heresy like most other Space Marine chapters. Um, when Rubik Gulliman turned around to them at the end of the heresy and said, look, we cannot allow this to happen again. We cannot allow Space Marine Legions to be of Legion strength. We need to split you down. Otherwise, the galaxy is risked, at risk. The Space Wolves, well, more primarily Layman Russ turned around to him and told him exactly where he could stick that suggestion. My Space Wolves are not going to uh, conform to your Codex Astartes, to your idea of warfare. We're going to stay at Legion strength, and they have since then. And so uh, Space Wolves have got the equivalent to chapters, and they're called Great Companies. I say they're the equivalent because some Great Companies can be as small as 100 or 200 uh, pack mates, and some can be over 1,000 pack mates, over chapter size. And the Great Companies function very differently from each other and there could have been specific rules for specific great companies in this book but uh, they decided not to go down that route which is a shame because that would have given Space Wolves an even more flavour, an extra bit of flavour and would have truly made them stand out even more because essentially what's making them stand out at the moment from other Space Marines is their plus one to hit whereas Blood Angels have got plus one to wound so which is better? Probably plus one to wound. I don't know. Plus one to wound. First you've got to hit, right? So if you're not getting less hits in, then you're potentially wounding less. Um, I don't know. But there's a lot of Space Wolf characters that hit on twos anyway. So that plus one to hit 
isn't going to help them unless there's a spell, unless there's a psychic power on them that gives them minus one to hit and they would be hitting on threes and now they're back to hitting on twos. Um, it's probably, I don't know, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the grand scheme of it, it will probably equal itself out. Pro plus two to hit is probably just as good as plus one to wound. Don't know, someone will math hammer it out there, I'm sure. Um, so that makes them stand out, but that's not much difference, right? There I am directly comparing it to Blood Angels. Uh, one of the things that allows Space Wolves to stand out from other codexes is they have access to so many characters, is they have some very unique units. So the look and the feel of a Space Wolves army is, is different to other units, other Space Marine codexes. But they could have made them stand out even more. They could have had specific rules for great companies, which give them that extra little bit of zing, that extra little bit of flavor. I would have done something like that, but uh, they chose not to go down that route. They have got lots and lots of units to play with, though. So let's run through all of these. Um, so Logan Grimnar and Logan Grimnar on Stormrider. He's got a two up save flat now. I think on Stormrider he had a 3-up, but now he's got a 2-up all the other way around. R. Jack Rothfist, Bjorn the Fell Handed, and Jarl Stormcaller. And then the Jarl Stormcaller in Terminator Armor. You have Rune Priests, either normal Rune Priests or Primaris Rune Priests or, pri or Rune Priests in Terminator Armor. Ulrich the fl fl uh, Slayer, Wolf Priest in Terminator Armor, and Primaris Wolf Priests, and normal Wolf Priests. Ragnar Blackmane, Krom Dragon Graze. Gaze, Herald Deaf Wolf, Wolf Lords of all the flavors of Wolf Lords. So you've got a Wolf Lord and then on a Thunder Wolf, then in Terminator Armor, then in Cataphracty Armor, then a Primaris Wolf Lord, and a Wolf Lord in Gravis Armor, Canis Wolfborn, Wolfguard Battle Leaders, Primaris Battle Leaders, Wolfguard Battle Leader in Terminator Armor, Wolfguard Battle Leader on a Thunder Wolf Cavalry and an Iron Priest. And that's 27 flavors of HQ right there. Give you some idea of just how much Space Wolves really like their um, HQ characters. And then the troops, we have Blood Claws, Grey Hunters, Intercessors. Here's another missed trick. So the sergeant in the intercessor squad can either replace their bolt rifle with a chainsaw or take a chainsaw in addition to their other weapons, getting his attacks up to four if you give him a chainsaw. But it would have been nice to see all the intercessors given chainsaws. I think that would have been good. Or maybe instead of the sergeant just allowing him to have a chainsaw, letting him have a frost axe or frost sword or something like that. Um, a chance to add a bit more flavour to the intercessors is what I'm saying, but uh, the only new addition there really is the sergeant can take a chainsaw. So looking at Grey Hunters, for those that don't know, Grey Hunters are basically their tactical marines. They're 13 points of pop, and just like tactical marines, they come with bolt guns, bolt pistols, frag grenades and crack grenades. But you can give them all a chainsaw if you want to, so going from one attack to two attacks. Chainsaws are free, they cost zero points. The one on your intercessor sergeant, zero points, you can just take one. And on the Grey Hunters, you can just take one. So you're always going to take one. So Grey Hunters have an additional attack over standard Space Marines, getting their attacks up to two. And it's not negative either. You don't have to swap out your bolt gun or bolt pistol or anything. You can just take one, as well as your bolt gun and bolt pistol, getting up to two attacks, which is nice. It's a nice little touch there. I think they could always do that. Um, and then you have Wolfguard Pack Leaders, and you can give your Wolfguard Terminator... You can give your Wolfguard pack leader Terminator armor if you want to in a, in a Grey Hunter's squad, which is interesting because you could give him a Storm Shield to tank a lot of the hits. Um, yeah. In the Elites, we have Wolf Scouts, Reavers, Aggressors, Servitors, Lucas the Trickster, Wolf and Dreadnought. What is a Wolf and Dreadnought, I hear you ask? Well, a Wolf and Dreadnought is a single model equipped with a Fenrisian Great Axe, a Great Wolf Claw, and a Storm Bolter. And you may replace the Great Axe or the Great Wolf Claw with a Blizzard Shield and a Storm Bolter if you want to. So this is the Dreadnought with the Shield and the Axe. And uh, Wolf and Dreadnoughts basically have the same stat lines as Dreadnoughts, but they have a um, Ballistic Skill of 5 up. So that Stormbolt was never hitting anything, but it's still got four attacks, a weapon skill of three with its four attacks, but when it charges or gets charged, it'll be hitting on twos. 
It's got murder lust. You can re-roll any failed charge rolls with this model, and the Blizzard Shield gives it a four up and vulnerable save. A Wolf and Dreadnought with a Blizzard Shield and a friend Rizian Great Axe is 135 points. He's not a character, so he can be targeted. But you've got a Dreadnought there with a four up and vulnerable save who can re-roll charge rolls with his four attacks and hitting on twos when he goes swinging in there. And the Fryn Rizian Great Axe can cleave or scythe. So if you're cleaving away, you're hitting at strength 10 at minus 3 AP, D6 damage. But you're subtracting one from the hit roll when you swing with that axe. So after he charges, he's down to two. And minus one to hit, he's back up to three. But strength 10, minus three, D6 damage is pretty pokey. Or you can do the scythe attack and make two hit rolls from each attack made from this weapon instead of one. So he's got eight attacks. And he'll be hitting on twos when he charges with that. Um, at minus 3 AP and 1 damage each, that's strength 6, minus 3 AP and 1 damage each. 135 points for that bad boy with a shield though. Um, then the Great Company Ancients, the Primaris Ancients, Great Company Champion, Wolfguard, Wolfguard Terminators, Normal Dreadnought, Wolfguard, Cataphracty Terminators, Wolfguard, Tartarus Terminators, Venerable Dreadnought, Contempt to Dreadnought, Redempt to Dreadnought, Wolfen, Murderfang, those are your elites. Just like the HQs, Space Wolves love their elites. Let's have a brief look at Wolfen, because we know Wolfen are good. They've got Bound in Lope, so that they can advance and charge in the same turn, and they move seven. Um, they've still got Death Frenzy, so when they die, they attack again, and Curse of the Wolfen Hunt and Kill is still a thing. So Wolfen are still beef, but arguably they're even beefier, because now they're going to be hitting on twos. Um, everyone's got Wolfen, people will probably get even more Wolfen. <laughs> uh, fast attack, we have Sky Claws, Swift Claws, Swift Claw Attack Bikes, Land Speeders, Inceptors, uh, Thunder Wolf Cavalry, Fenrisian Wolves, Wolf Scout Bikers, Cyber Wolves. In the heavy slot, you've got your Long Fangs and Hell Blasters. Hunters and Stalkers, I don't think they were available in the Space Wolves beforehand, but Hunters and Stalkers are in here, that's AA for... Um, Space Wolf Armies, um, they're not very good, no one rarely <laughs> brings them, but it gives you that choice if you want to get them. Whirlwinds, Predators, Vindicator, Land Raiders, Land Raider Crusader, no Thunderfire Cannon in here, and none of those, um, what are they called? Centurions, that's what I'm thinking about, Centurions. But uh, all the flavours are Land Raiders. Then you have Rhinos, Razorbacks, Drop Pods, Land Speed of Storm, that's new for Space Wolves, Land Speed of Storms. Probably a good idea in a Space Wolf army because having a very fast delivery system for Wolf Scouts is not necessarily a bad idea. Remember Land Speed of Storms move 18 inches and Wolf Scouts hitting on twos when they charge. You can get and give them uh, the combat knife, so hitting on twos with two attacks. And the Wolf Scout Pack Leader can take a Storm Shield, so he's got 3 up in Vulnerable Save if you want to make him a bit more survivable, but 11 points a pop. Probably best to keep them cheap. But yeah, Land Speed of Storms in a Space Wolf's army as a distraction, dumping off scouts all over the place with that 18-inch move. That's an interesting thing. I found Land Speed of Storms in battles to be quite useful as well, because they're relatively cheap. Keep them cheap, leave, leave them with a bolt gun on it. Having a platform that can move 18 inches um, and take objectives. It's the fastest thing that the Adeptus Astartes have to take objectives that's not a flyer. The flyers can't take objectives, but being able to move from A to B really quickly and take an objective is a useful tool. Also moving 18 inches and then suddenly charging a tank or charging something which you can't hurt but it forces that tank to fall back and then that tank can't shoot. So using Land Speed of Storms as distraction units, just a couple of them here or there, I found quite useful. Um, other uh, transport options is the Repulsor. Then you have uh, the Storm Fang gunship, the Storm Wolf gunship, and the Storm Hawk Interceptor has made its way into the Space Wolf's book. Book. That's not the Storm Talon one, which is a ground attack craft, it's the Storm Hawk Interceptor, which is the anti-aircraft um, interceptor, uh, well, sport Storm Hawk Interceptor, it's the interceptor flyer that has plus one to hit rolls when targeting enemy models in the shooting phase that can fly. 
All right, let's close out here. That's my review of the Space Wars Codex. Sorry, I don't have the knowledge to be able to dive into it any deeper, but uh, space puppies are always pretty angry. Now they're going to get even angrier. If I was running it, I'd run them with as, as aggressive as possible, with minimum backfield support, chucking melters in assault squads, skyclaw squads, or tactical squads, or the equivalent of tactical squad, chucking melters all over the place, here, there, and everywhere for that anti-tank capability when you go flying up the field and uh, get that uh, two up to hit and chuck in quite a few characters here, there and all over the place for that heroic intervention at six inches as well. So when any, whenever anyone charges you, they step into that blender and you make them pay. So yeah, I expect them to get even more aggressive. They were angry enough. Um, but yeah, I'll close out now. Thank you very much for listening. Um, if you want to become a patron, you can become a patron if you want to. Uh, as for my patrons, if you want to ask me any questions in the patron chat rooms, I'll answer the questions for you. Uh, if you're interested in more Winter's SEO battle reports, then you can check out deploymentzone.tv. And you'll also find my exclusive tactical series on there as well, Winter's Top Tips. So thank you for listening. Happy Wargaming.